It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious April weekend? I'm shaking, Rob, because I've got to transfer the flag from Naples up to Ocean City, New Jersey. I'll tell you what, Bob, you know, the endless summer, Bob Payne, it's a, it's a good life. Just warm it up there a little bit, will you? Hey, it's, uh, it's coming. Weather's getting better. Please. It's just, uh, just in time for you to uh, relax on the Jersey Shore. It's, 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 all, it's all in the cards for you, Bob. All right. I love it, Ryan. Thanks, uh, thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> I do what I can. Well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about his and hers retirement plans. We're going to break down the critical issues you and your spouse need to discuss when it comes to your financial planning. If only you knew... Bob and I are going to discuss certain aspects of the financial world. If you understood better, it would make your retirement planning so much easier. Along with this week's financial propaganda, where we call out the worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting. And we have our financial advisor, Emily DeValente, on the show this morning, where we do our spotlight segment, where we're going to actually review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's hop to it. Bob... Do you find that most couples have spent a lot of time talking about retirement plans before they come in and meet with you, or does it seem that their first conversation about financial matters actually takes place in the office? Well, you know, Ry, every couple's different, but uh, pretty much the way it works with with couples is there's one spouse who's fully involved, fully engaged yes. in the investment process and the planning process, and there's always one uninvolved spouse. Yeah, all the time when they come into the office, it's probably, it doesn't matter if it's the husband or wife, but somebody definitely is the one who drives the finances where the other doesn't want to know about it at all. It's usually the normal, I'd say, uh, couple relationship. Yeah, so I guess the, the first real discussion occurs in our office when they come in for the first time. And that's where Bob plays couples therapy, <laughs> financial therapy, that's right? right. Hey, look, everybody needs a sounding board. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has greed and fear, and they want to know. So it's good to have a financial advisor who's kind of unbiased and, and can be a sounding board so you can truly hash out these issues that are so critical you know, to your finances. Yeah. And Bob, what are some of the things that need to be discussed or decided between the husband and wife before you know, true planning can really begin? You know, Ry, it, uh, it comes down to the budget. How are we going to spend all this money we amass? There's uh, sometimes some views are diametrically opposed. Yeah, it's amazing how one spouse can be thinking to themselves, you know, I want to be fiscally disciplined. I only need to live off of 80% of what we're spending right now. The kids will be out of the house. Then the other spouse is thinking, I want to travel. I want to spend more money. I want to do more fun things. So really coming to, you know, some sort of uh, common ground there can be very, very tricky. And that's really one of the first things you need to do. Yeah, and the last thing you want to have happen, Rye, is that, uh, you know, you've already heard that financial planning urban legend where the uh, surviving spouse who's never been involved comes to your office because you have to have that hard discussion about overspending, that they're going to run out of money. And they pull out the checkbook and say, how can I possibly run out of money when I have all these <laughs> checks in my checkbook? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a scary thing, Bob. And I think that's why it's, it's so important. And the biggest disservice you're doing to your spouse who's not interested in the finances is they're in the dark and keeping them in the dark because God forbid something happens to you. It's an absolute disaster. Uh, for the surviving spouse when it comes to now having to deal with the finances. No, it's so true, Ryan. A, a thing that really hits me in the face every day is, you know, sometimes I'm afraid to pick up the phone. You know, now I'm in my mid-60s. I have clients in their 70s and 80s, and it's it's almost every day, you know, I get some sad news about someone with a um, debilitating illness or they just passed away. And, and a lot of it's sudden. A lot of it's uh, one day they're healthy of the horse, and two weeks later, you know, they're I'm going to a funeral. Yeah. And if the other spouse doesn't know where things are, I mean, we have stories upon stories of trying to find out where, you know, was the life insurance policies hidden in the shoebox, you know, <laughs> inside the closet sure. and other assets uh, that were that are somewhere else in a lockbox and things like that. It's just that everything tends to be spread out and it's just so hard to put that together. And if you have passwords, 
to get in is impossible for the surviving spouse because the one who passed away didn't let anyone know what their passwords were. So they have no idea how to get into all the different accounts. You know, Ryan, my 45-year career, the best compliment I've ever been paid by my clients has been, you know, Bob, you and your team care more about my money than I do. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's scary, but it's true because you know where everything is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> right? that's, the thing that's, that's the thing that amazes me. The more money you have, the less you care about it, and the less you really recognize where it is. A lot of times you don't even know what you have. You know, <laughs> ask yourself right now at the top of your head how much you're worth. You probably don't know. Yeah, and that's why I love our 360 portal because with technology now, uh, what we're able to do, especially in that first meeting, is just tally up all the assets you have. We were able to build you a mm-hmm. portal so that all the financial assets are in one place. They get updated on a daily basis. It's one password to get in, not a thousand passwords. And you can put all the legal docs, insurance policies, all in the same place. I mean, just to do that, Bob, and be proactive about that, just you're doing such a service for your for your spouse who's uninterested in the finances. It just takes so many headaches away later. You know, Ron, we also have a lot of clients that are married for the second time. And you know, this might surprise you, but uh, a lot of my male clients who have remarried do you think they marry a spouse who's older than them, the same age, or, or a tad younger? I'm going to take a wild guess here, Bob. Those men, they always go for the younger woman. Yeah, and you end up with a very complex financial plan. And I just had one the other day, a really good good friend of mine who just turned 80, uh, his spouse, who's 16 years younger, said, Bob, where is everything? And I said, <laughs> You know, he didn't tell you. He said, oh, yeah, he's got everything in different drawers and different closets and everything's marked. And it's real, this real cryptic strategy. <laughs> and she said, I don't want that. I want to know where everything is. And I said, well, that's why we got to sit down and load up the portal. And now she's happy. She's sleeping at night. She knows where everything is. And he's happy, too, because he wants her to know. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not that you don't want your spouse to know, but you know they get overwhelmed, which is another thing, Bob, is you don't want to work with a financial advisor who speaks in like Chinese, right? Or they speak, you know, sure. they speak above your head. And that's one thing I know the one spouse who's not interested always has trepidation about is I don't want to sit down with somebody, not understand what's going on and feel worse after the meeting. So you really need somebody who can break things down into simplistic terms that's understandable so both spouses can be involved. That's like the magic formula right there. You know, Rye, our, our favorite client, the neurosurgeon just passed away in Philadelphia and his spouse told Chris the other day, so Chris, you're you know, sorry. I really appreciate you and pain capital management because you're the only person in all the different disciplines who's helped me since my husband died who speaks English and makes it plain and simple for me to understand. Yeah. At the end of the day, Bob, everything should be common sense and it should be explained in common sense so everybody's on the same page. And if, and if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of planning I need. I need to get my finances in order. I have to make sure my spouse is involved, that we're on the same page. Everything is proactively put together correctly. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is get those statements, print them off the computer, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you that 360 financial portal where we can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial life and start looking at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden cost in investment portfolios. We're going to show you all the hidden fees are on those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, brokerage products, show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio properly diversified? Did you get hit really hard in December when the market collapsed? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio and safeguard it in retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. How are you going to replace that income when you're finally retired? If you're retired now, we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to create a lifetime of income you cannot live. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And great news. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. You need to be one of our next 10 callers. And if you've saved over 200000 for retirement, my son and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost 
but there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and I'm on the radio with my son, Rye, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management. This week on the Street of Dreams, first quarter earnings season was in full swing. And the famous quote of the rumors of my demise are greatly exaggerated comes to mind as the feared earnings recession so talked about this past December did not show up in the first quarter numbers. Of the S&P 500 companies reporting so far, 79% have better analyst expectations. Microsoft, with strong fiscal earnings, became the third U.S. company to surpass the $1 trillion milestone in market cap. And Lockheed Martin, the aerospace company, exhibited the strongest growth in a decade. Now, the market cheered these results and pushed the S&P 500 and the tech-heavy NASDAQ back to all-time record highs, simply because earnings are still growing. Now, the S&P is on track to have its best year since 1987, and the NASDAQ is on track for its best year since 1991. Nevertheless, this remains one of the most hated bull markets in my lifetime. Investors, large and small, have been reticent to embrace this market, and negative sentiment is one of the reasons I've been an unadulterated bull over the last 10 years. But I sense this is finally starting to turn. Don't be surprised when your friends, your family, even your accountant start to brag to you about their successful speculations. Bull market fever is starting to show up in my numerous daily conversations with investors. A longtime friend and client mentioned to me the other day that his accountant is touting his success in picking stocks from a market newsletter. Keep in mind, single stock speculation is gambling. And just like gambling, you never hear about the losers. And again, the house ultimately always wins. Over the last nine years, all active managers, now these are full-time professionals who have access to every newsletter, every research report. They even have access to the executives in the corporate office. They've underperformed the market for the last nine years. Warren Buffett, the greatest investor in our lifetime, admitted the other day that his portfolio is underperforming the market and has underperformed for the last 10 years. And you'd be better served to buy the market going forward than to invest in his stock. In Greek mythology, the sirens were dangerous creatures who lured unsuspecting sailors with their enchanting music to crash upon the rocky shores of their island. See, speculation is not investing. It's gambling and always ends in tears. So my advice is ignore the siren song of speculation, stay invested in a balanced, gold-based portfolio that generates the returns you need. Don't be tempted to chase the returns you may want. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, do I have the portfolio that I need to achieve my goals to my dreams? Is it appropriate to my risk tolerance? Well, why sit there and wonder when you can know? Simply give us a call or just text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I, we're simple men, so obviously we want to keep it simple for you, give you common sense advice for your planning and investing, and that's why we put together our newest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. We go through all the different ways to maximize your taxes, everything from health savings accounts to Roth conversions, Roth IRAs, 401ks. We give you all the different tax vehicles to help you save taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. Five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. We break down all the different ways that you can save money on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. So Bob, as financial professionals... There's a lot of things we wish everyone knew and understood about their retirement planning and investing. So I thought we could explain how our job would be a lot different if our listeners just understood a couple of these key concepts. And the first one being, we wish you knew what you were truly paying for your investments. 
You know, Brian, the biggest problem is statements. On the statements, all they tell the client is what the commission was on the latest transaction. And if there's an advisory fee, once a quarter, it lists the advisory fee. But the products that are listed on your statement, never, ever do they tell you what the annual, daily, or monthly costs are of holding those investments. Well, the amazing thing is, and the insurance companies can be the biggest culprits of this, a lot of times you'll get sold an annuity or an insurance product, and they'll tell you there's no fees. And Bob, last time I looked, those insurance companies are not philanthropic organizations. You know what drives you crazy about the insurance industry? Did they realize that the internet was created a number of years ago? (laughs) Because there's no online access to a lot of these products. I mean, it's amazing how they keep that information so close to the vest and (laughs) let the client go out and find it on their own. I mean, they really need help to find out what the costs are of investing that way. Yeah. Like I say, you need a black belt uh, um, in investment analysis to understand a lot, how a lot of these insurance products work and even understand where the fees are. Like, you know, we always joke, but you get this big prospectus in the mail that's so thick. You just imagine all the farce that were just taken down. So you can get this prospectus that you're going to throw in the trash and literally the writing in it, you you need a magnifying glass and go through it. Maybe like a hundred pages in, you can actually find where the expenses on some of these products are. You just don't know where they are. They're not right in front of you, I guess, is the bottom line. You know, right? that's why we have a couch and smelling salts in every one of our offices, because once somebody finds out exactly what they're paying to the insurance company or the mutual fund companies, we sometimes have to revive them. It, 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 they become faint when they find out how much it's costing them to not make money. Exactly right. It's, it, when it comes to fees, it's the devil you see isn't as bad as the devil you don't see. So it's really important to understand what all your costs are and have an analysis run on that. Bob, another thing I wish that everyone knew about their finances is we wish you knew that the real risk potential in your portfolio, instead of just choosing to focus on the upside potential, right? I mean, it's like when things are going great, you don't think about what happens when the market goes down. But when it does, it's already too late if you have a risky portfolio. You know, I love volatility because, you know, we had the volatility in December. We had the worst December since 1931. And it really did. It just focused people back on the risk that's inherent in financial assets. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, you know, the problem with investing is you don't know you're taking too much risk till it's too late, right? So you have to be proactive. When things are going well, that's the time you need to adjust your portfolio. You don't want to wait until the shoe drops and all of a sudden your portfolio is down 20, 30, 40%. Yeah, you know, and I don't blame anyone for that, Rye. I mean, you're, you tend to predict the future based on your most recent experience. So if your statement goes up month after month, you assume that's going to continue. If you have a big drop, then you, you assume the same thing. So there are some tools that you can use. For example, you know, what are some of the tools that you use, Rye, to, to identify, you know, inherent risk and in helping clients bulletproof their portfolio? Yeah, well, with our investment analysis spreadsheet that we run, when we, we, we take all your assets, put them on one page, we actually back test it. Now, you always say history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. But we can put your portfolio under the stress test and we look and see in the past, how did your portfolio hold up in what we would call a bad market? And a lot of times, if it didn't do well in the market back like in 2008, next time the market crashes, it's probably not going to do well again. So, you know, there's ways to look at your portfolio and assess risk so that you know there's proactive moves you can make today so you're just not in that position again. And how many of us, you know, got really hit really hard in 2008? It took us a long time to recover, and mentally we might never have recovered from just how bad that crash was, and we never want that to happen again. You know, Rye, I disagree with you. History doesn't rhyme. It does repeat. It'll repeat again. I see you making the same mistakes now that you made 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. It's the same process. You need to take some risk off the table. Markets go higher. They don't become less valuable. They become more valuable. They come out overvalued. But you got to be very careful in this environment. Yeah, because now you're probably getting close to retirement. You're retired now. It's a different ball game. You need a different portfolio. Bob, another thing that we wish everyone knew is we wish you knew the motivations behind the information that you might hear on TV, read in magazines, or find on that Google search, what we call the proverbial financial propaganda. Why is that so dangerous? You know why it's so dangerous, Rye, is because these are people that are selling products, right? It's uh, financial propaganda. It costs a ton of money to advertise on TV. So when you see something like crash-proof retirement or how much money I'm making in gold and silver, you don't walk away from that advice. You run. Yeah, and then just the information that's that's on from these prognosticators or these people that have PhDs 
after their name. They went to Ivy League schools, and they sound so smart. But they're on TV. It's entertainment. <laughs> it's not solid <laughs> financial advice. And there's so little of that when you start turning on these financial shows and you start reading a lot of these articles that are out there. It's not helpful advice. No, it's not at all. And, you know, we spend week after week talking about, you know, why this is dangerous and why you shouldn't listen to this. But unfortunately, you know, these TV shows wouldn't exist without advertising. And the advertisers are the person selling those products. And guess who's paying for the advertising, Ry? You, when you buy some of these lousy products. <laughs> exactly. Bob, the last thing, and I think this is actually a really important one, we wish that you knew about your finances, that the well-known companies with a national brand aren't automatically the best option for you just because they have a name. And I think more than ever right now, the big brokerage firms don't have to act in your best interest. And that you would think because they're the biggest brands, they'd be the most trustworthy, but a lot of times they don't have to have your best interest in mind. And that happens more than, than you think. Yeah, you know, right. They're, they're U.S. companies. And in U.S. companies, we do a really good job in our economy of, of having manufacturing, right? We're a great manufacturing company. When I think of these wirehouses or banks, all I think about is these big product factories. They create products to sell you because that's where they make the most money. That's right. And you and I come from one of the big wirehouses. And we'll just name a couple of them. I won't call anyone out in general. But you know, you talk about JP Morgan, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley. All these companies, to your point, Bob, they don't have to act in your best interest by law. In fact, they fought that. They didn't have to act in your best interest. And a lot of times when they sell you something, it happens to be the yield or the commission that goes to the broker as the incentive as opposed to your financial needs. Yeah, they're in the profit business, right? They're not in the business of helping you achieve their goals. If they were, they'd be fiduciaries like us. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I need to be financially healthy. I need to know what I own in my portfolio is appropriate. I need to know what fees I'm paying. I need to know if I'm positioned to win. Well, here's your opportunity to know. If you're one of our next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, it's a full holistic review where we basically look at everything. It's the only review you'll ever need. All you have to do is gather your statements, stick them in a shopping bag, stick them in a folder, and pick up the phone. Call us and text and set up an appointment. We're going to put all of your information into one easy-to-read file. We're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. We're going to review everything with you and build your own 360 financial portal. We want to see if you're truly diversified, if you're overcharging yourself, or you have the income you need to fill that income gap in retirement. You know, there are a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio. They're buried deeply in this prospectus of the mutual funds you may own, or they're in the insurance contract of these different complex insurance products that not only do you not understand, but the salesperson who sold it to you doesn't understand. We want to make life simple. We want to take the complex and simplify it so that you can achieve your financial independence, sleep at night, and be comfortable with the portfolio that you have. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money, or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies, my firm and my family have been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right, for four decades. We've been assisting families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, you're one of the next 10 callers at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion at no cost to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call up the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there 
this week in the hard world of financial propaganda? Well, Rod, what I found is, and this is a public service announcement, that the unicorns are coming. The unicorns are coming. Well, that sounds like, I don't know, something out of a fantasy science fiction film. (laughs) What does that mean? Well, basically, this article went into what's happening now, just like the dot-com bubble. A lot of these unprofitable companies that are called unicorns, there's probably about 12 or 14 of them that the market's focused on, are coming to market with what's called an IPO, an initial public offering. Yep. And what I want to warn everybody about is to not buy these and to stay away from them. We just had Lyft just went public, and the stock came at $72 a share, Opened at $87 a share. Great profit, except for it's trading under 60 right now, right? Yeah. No, it's uh, so you're saying I should take all my money out of Lyft. I just thought that was a way to uh, save my retirement, Bob. I'm, I have to reassess my uh, allocation. Well, here's the thing. These are companies that have never made a profit. They lose tons of money every year, right? And Lyft came out and said, eh, we might not be profitable for maybe five years, maybe never. And we well, want you to value our company at tens of millions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars. Um, and they're losing a billion dollars uh, this year, Bob. It's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, right behind that, Uber's coming. And that's even more dangerous than Lyft because, you know, I'm going to say lost last year, right? Well, Lyft lost a billion, so I'm going to say five billion. I'm just taking a wild guess. All right. Pretty close. Three billion dollars. Now, you know, hey. I don't know about you, but investing in a company that loses three billion dollars can't be healthy for your financial situation. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I had a friend I was hanging out with the other day, and he asked me, "Man, what if you just had a fund just to get all the IPOs?" Well, you know, for every IPO that does well, or initial public offering does well, because there were two that did really well last week. Uh, you had Zoom come out as an IPO, and you also had Pin Interest, two that actually did phenomenal on the first day. For every company that does well on the opening, there's a lot of dogs out there that do terrible, and in fact, statistically. If you look at IPOs, investing in IPOs versus just a regular portfolio, IPO portfolios actually underperform the market over time. So for every winner, remember, there's probably five or six losers that didn't do well. I guess it wouldn't surprise you to know, Rai, that the uh, Wall Street's focused on these 12 unicorns, some of which have already gone public, as you just mentioned. Combined, they lost $14 billion over the last 12 months. And since they started, They've lost a combined $46 billion. Wow. Yeah. So (laughs) buyer beware, I think, is the moral story there. And I know it's great cocktail party conversation when people start talking about initial public offerings and should I put my money into some of these things. But again, Bob, buyer beware, uh, definitely not the best place for your money if you're trying to grow your portfolio for retirement. And that's the problem with financial propaganda, Rye, because they keep telling people that you know, you, you, you maybe you missed this bull market, but you can catch up by putting money into Bitcoin or, or buy a marijuana or <laughs> cannabis stock or buy one of these IPOs. You know, it's financial propaganda. Don't be a speculator. Be an investor. There's plenty of great value available in financial assets that are liquid, that are known, and listen to this, Rye, yeah. profitable. Profitable, exactly. And I put a little money into Bitcoin, and believe me, it wasn't pretty pop, but that's another story. <laughs> Another article that I found this week, actually, this is one that you you found, you sent to me, and it was so good I thought I'd talk about it, is just what is going on with money managers right now. And the two biggest things that money managers are doing right now, professional money managers, is number one, the most overcrowded trade right now, meaning where most professionals are putting their money, is the proverbial fang trade, which is Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Apple, and Google, you got them all in there. And basically, Bob, what we're seeing there is everyone's tending to put their money in the same place. And if you remember back mm-hmm. in December when the market sold off, those stocks sold off more than the overall market. So it's very dangerous when everyone's putting their money in the same place. Hey, Ry, you can't blame the Fang. I mean, they, they, they took its bite out of portfolios in December. It's just coming back for a second bite. Wow. I like that, Bob. Very clever. Very clever. Also, not only did these managers love putting more money into the FANG trade, but the most unloved place to put money right now is Europe. And you know, one thing I think is really important when we build a portfolio and what you need to think about with your portfolio is we always talk about diversification. And it's very dangerous when you put all your money in one area. And that's why we build that spreadsheet so we can see how your money spread out because you may have too much money concentrated in one area as well. Yeah, so true, Ryan. The thing is, you know, we are backward looking in our thinking. As I mentioned earlier, we predict 
the future based on our most recent experience. And everybody's recognized that over the last 10 years, the S&P 500 has returned 16% a year. It's been phenomenal. Any idea what the 10-year previous track record was of the S&P 500? 0.0. 0.0. The S&P made no money for an entire decade, Bob. So that's Actually, pretty much US 3% stocks. Actually, lost 3% a year, right? Actually, lost 3% a year. So you went from losing 3% a year to making 16% a year. I believe in something called reversion to the mean. Diversify your portfolio. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. So, I mean, the one thing that you really want to look at, and this is one of the dangers, you may think you're diversified because you have maybe you have a 401k over here, but then you have a brokerage account over here, a savings account here. Okay. You have another financial advisor over here. Well, a lot of times you're going to end up buying all the same things. Even though a lot of these funds have different names to them, if you go under the hood and look at the investments inside, they probably all own Apple. They probably all own Amazon. And you end up owning all the same stuff and you're not truly diversified. It's a great irony. No, no. The only problem is that kind of risk is only recognized in hindsight. In other words, you don't realize it until your statement's down 20% and then it's too late. Yeah. So the key there is, and this is why we talk about getting a bird's eye view, Bob, is you want to tally up all your assets in one place and look at everything in one place, ideally on one spreadsheet. That's what we do when people come into our office. And then you can start to look and see. We do a whole portfolio x-ray and we can see where is your money actually concentrated. And you'll probably be surprised. You probably have more money in the same area than you thought you did. Well, that's the key, Rye. Right? Diversification is not about being right. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be right. I just want to be rich. And that's the way to invest. <laughs> that's a great philosophy. I like that. Um, and if you're thinking to yourself right now, I don't know what I own. I don't know if I'm properly diversified. I may have too much money in the same area as well. I have a hodgepodge of investments. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure that everything's in the right place. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. This month, print out those statements, or if they came in the mail, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you that 360 financial portal we always talk about. We load everything into this portal. We get a bird's eye view. We can look at the whole financial picture, and we can look at all those critical elements to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in these portfolios you don't know you're paying on those annuities, insurance products, mutual funds. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, and we're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket. We're going to look at diversification. Do you have lots of accounts out there doing lots of different things? We're going to show you how diversified you are. We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio. Did you get hit hard when the market sold off back in December? We're going to show you how to protect yourself, safeguard your money for retirement, and we're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to create a lifetime of income that you can't outlive by optimizing or increasing the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And this is all yours with just a simple call or text, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. You have to be one of our next few callers. You have to have saved at least 200000 for your retirement. And if so, we'll create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and no cost. There won't be a plan unless we hear from you. So call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. And we're the pains. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Let's see what people are saying about no pain, no gain. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Now, back to Ryan and Bob. It's no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to give you the most common sense, practical advice you can use with your planning and investing. That's why we put together our new guide, Five Ways to Maximize Retirement Accounts. It's a free guide to give you five different ways to make sure that you're optimizing everything for taxes, everything from health savings accounts, Roth conversions, 401ks. We break down very simple ways that you can save money on taxes. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U, 
L L I S H to five 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 eight eight eight. That's the word bullish to five 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 eight eight eight. Five ways to maximize retirement accounts. We show you a couple of common sense ways that you can save money on taxes using the most tax efficient vehicles. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to five 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 eight eight eight. That's the word bullish to five 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 eight eight eight. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. Yes, Bob's hair is real, but you need to check it out for yourself. Simply go to BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to our show, get Bob's weekly market commentary, learn more about what we do at Paying Capital Management. Go to BeBullish.com. Check it out. And you can catch myself, most of our financial advisors on all the major networks every week, everywhere from CNBC, Fox Business News, Yahoo Finance, TD Ameritrade, talking about our views on the economy, the market. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our studio producer, Mark Haywood, here to help us with those questions today. What's shaking, Mark? Oh, gentlemen, May is upon us. It's warming up outside, and soon it will be time to head to the beach. I love it. I know, man. So ready. So ready. I'm done with the cold. I'm ready for this warmth to come. It's uh, we're, we're you know, just about that there, time man. of year. You start to feel that sand in your shoes, Mark. That's right. That's right. It's time to get out of the studio here and head on out to the beach. <laughs> but we do need to take some questions before we get to any of those plans. Let's see what we've got in the mailbag today. We've got Charlie, who's written in to us from White Plains, New York. Charlie says, Bob, I almost got out of the market before it dropped down in the fourth quarter. Now I'm back to where I was before. Should I get out now? Well, Charlie, I think that's a great question. And uh, it speaks volumes because if you thought you should get out before the market drops, you're trying to time the market. And historically, no one's been able to do that successfully. Here's the hard part, right? It's so easy to get out of a market and people panic out. Do you know anyone who calls people to panic back in? (laughs) Yeah, that's the problem, Bob. You can't just be right once. You have to be right twice because it's like you got out of the market so when do you get back in? And man, that's a hard, hard game to play. That's the other thing. And, and, and it doesn't recognize the fact that, Charlie, I don't know how old you are, but all of you, if you think how old you are today, here's some news. We've been in a booming bull market your entire life. In other words, the stock market today is higher than any time in history than any when you were born. So if you look at you, your children, your grandparents, market always goes up over time. So it's not a matter of timing the market, right? It's time in the market. And the only way to do that, as far as I can see, is to have a balanced, diversified portfolio that helps to abate the fear. Yeah. And I think that's the critical point here, Bob, is it's not about being in or out of the market. You always want to be in the market, but it's about adjusting your risk over time. And what that means is, you know, what is your allocation to safe investments versus risky investments? And invariably, the closer you are to retirement, or if you're retired now, the less dependent you can be on the volatility of the stock market. But that's not an all or none proposition. That's about reducing risk in the portfolio, which is a very different thing. You know, and listen, Ryan, I don't blame anyone for being scared. We had a very frightful 2008 market went down 50%. We had the same thing happen in 2000. Stock market went down 50%. That has a lifetime impact on your investment psyche. But here's the thing. If you've had a balanced portfolio in spite of those two drops, if you were invested right through those two drops, you made somewhere between six and seven percent a year for the last 40 years. What does the average investor make trying to time the market, right? It's not pretty, Bob. I want to say it's like half that, around two, three percent a year, just because we try to figure out when to be in the market, be out of the market. But market timing kills your return. It's crazy. Yeah, because half the return comes from dividends and interest. So if you're sitting in a money market fund, you're going to average 2%. If you try and time the market, you know you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So you really want to be an investor. You need to invest based on a plan. You need to invest on your personal goals. And, you know, listen, you need to sit down with a professional to show you how to do it. Well, thanks, Charlie, for writing in. Let's move over now to Leo, who's writing in from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Now, this is a bit of an unusual question, but an important question, so I'm glad he's asked it. He says, Ryan, I'm embarrassed to ask this question, but I'm wondering what you do once you're in your 70s and realize you have more money than you'll ever be able to spend. 
I have three kids, and I guess they'll probably just inherit all of it. But in a weird way, I'm almost sad that I didn't enjoy life a little bit more along the way instead of working so hard to save up all of this money that I'll never use myself. And we see this all the time. This is actually a very common issue, Leo. Um, and I think the first thing is you want to do some proactive things, gifting being number one uh, yourself. And if you're married, uh, you both can do 15000 per person to any of your kids, grandkids, or anyone in your life that you'd like that money to go to, which is 15000 per person, or between you and your spouse, that's 30000 a year. 529 plans, which you can fund for education for your grandkids. You can front load that gift. So the point is, there's a lot of proactive planning you can do for wealth transference. And Bob, in my mind, a lot of times, you know, if you don't need the money, it's nice to see your kids and grandkids enjoy it during your lifetime as opposed to when you're not here anymore. It really is, Ry, because, you know, as we get older, the more insecure we become about our finances, no matter how much money we have. I see it happen all the time. But that's why planning is so important. It's not just about money. It's also about lifestyle and decisions and time that you spend. And, Ry, last I checked, nobody gets off this mortal coil alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's been uh, 100% <laughs> not uh, successful. Yeah. So. So, you know, for um, Leo, I mean, it's not too late. I mean, he can take his family on a – we have clients that are taking trips to Rome this summer with all their grandkids. We have people that are going to the Amalfi Coast. They're enjoying their lifestyle. They're enjoying their life with their children and grandchildren, why they still have their health, and they can afford it, and, and that's all what planning is about. Yeah, and that's where the planning process is so critical because you can model out what you're spending and go aspirational, as I like to say. Let's add some trips in there and all the things you could afford to do. And then above and beyond that, if you still want a gift, you can do that too. So it's just about a game plan. It really is, Ryan. You know, Charlie and Leo sending some really good questions, but let me ask you a question. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do they sound to you? I mean, I have to say... I'm going to give them about a four or five. They're answering the right questions, but uh, I have a feeling they could use a lot more planning than they're getting. You're getting very uh, kinder in your old age, Ry. So let me ask all of <laughs> you out there, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized do you feel right now? Wouldn't you want to be a 10? And if you do, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers that have saved over 200000 for retirement because we'll create for you your own personal 360 financial portal where we'll give you a whole holistic view of your entire net worth, something that is updated in real time. And more importantly, it's there when you feel like looking at it, not when you have to. On top of that, we're going to display all of your goals, your goals of gifting, your goals of retirement, the income that you need that uh, you can't outlive. We'll not only show you and have you articulate what these goals are in real time, but we'll show you how you're progressing towards those goals to make certain that they're achieved so you have that financial independence that we all want once we retire. And in addition, we're going to take all that complex information and break it down into a simple view to see if you have the three key elements of a successful portfolio strategy. We want to be certain that you're diversified properly across asset classes and within asset classes so you don't have that you know, disastrous overlap that causes such big declines when the market starts to become more volatile like it did last year. Cost, you know, I don't know about you. I personally despise being overcharged by anyone. The last thing I want is to be overcharged by my own portfolio, to have my own investments taking money out of my pocket and sticking in the advisor's pocket. I want it where it belongs, in my wallet, not theirs. And lastly, income. We're going to look at the income that your portfolio generates and be certain you have a dependable, repeatable cash flow. More importantly, we'll show you ways to increase that cash flow with taking a lot less risk than you're taking with your current portfolio. In addition, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, answering that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your financial goals, to your point B, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. We still have a couple slots left if you have over $200,000 for retirement. If you call or text right now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion at no cost to make sure you're on track 
at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to make sure that you have the most common sense advice for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just to give you the breakdown of all the different tax advantages you can be utilizing. Everything from health savings accounts, Roth IRAs, 401ks, Roth 401ks. We break it down to five different plans you can utilize. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. We break down five ways to do that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very, very special guest in our studio this morning. My colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Emily DeValent. Emily, practically sit right next to me too, like <laughs> only like a desk away. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm very, <laughs> very well aware. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who's the luckier of the two. <laughs> well, this is our spotlight segment. Each week we dissect a real financial plan and we uncover what we call the flaws or quote unquote pain points so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. And M, you worked on a case recently, and you were gonna. Why don't you tell us about how you helped this person get on their path to financial freedom? Yeah, perfect. So I recently worked on a case. It was a man um, in his late fifties, and he was he's looking to retire in the next couple years, and and really didn't know if that's something that he could do. So he just needed a plan to make sure that he's on the right track for doing that. So we took a look at everything. We went through uh, income, expenses, the accounts, and the first thing we noticed that is when he retires in a couple years, he's actually gonna have a pretty big gap in his income. So what he's taking in now is covering all of his expenses. But if he wants to continue his lifestyle the way that he's living it or pretty close to it, he's not gonna be able to do that with the income that he has in retirement. He had a big position in cash and the stuff that he had in the market as well, he wasn't very well diversified. He had a lot of growth companies, but not a lot of value companies was one of the first things that we noticed. And he just had a big lack of diversification in uh, alternatives and bonds as well. You know, I see that Cash has had a uh, phenomenal 10-year track record. It's guaranteed to have lost money in spite of the yield, right? Because we have 2% inflation rate. It's never been above 2%. So how did he sit with 50% of his portfolio in cash for 10 years? Was it out of fear or lack of understanding or, or what, was it, what was the rationale? I think it was a little bit of both. He didn't really understand exactly, you know, what he should have been doing in these accounts. So that's kind of when fear took over because he didn't know. And so he just kind of, you know, he let it sit. He didn't really know exactly where to go with it. So is this one of those things where 2008, the market had a big crash. He put money in cash and just never put it back to work. Was that the the reason why he's sitting with so much money in cash and not invested properly? Yeah. So some of the stuff that he's had in here, he's kind of held for a long time. But a lot of that, the cash has been newer money that, you know, he's making all of this money and he wasn't spending it. So his expenses were, were definitely under his income, but he was just kind of putting it in the accounts, but nothing to do. It's amazing when I look at the spreadsheet, how much more income you can generate it just by creating a conservative portfolio. I mean, I'm looking at $52,900 a year. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and so a lot of that will cover his expenses, that, that gap that he has um, once he does decide to retire in a couple of years. And then with the rest of that money, he can actually take it and just reinvest it back into his portfolio every single year. And what I love about that is there's nothing to do if the market's going up or down. That's just cash flow he Mm -hmm. knows is coming in every single year that he can rely on and he never has to touch his principal. To me, that's like, that's the magical formula. That's where you want to be. And in in this case, you're saying he can reinvest a lot of that cash because he doesn't need it right now. And that's much better than sitting in a money market fund earning virtually nothing. Yeah. In this particular case, it, it has a double use, which is great. You know, and, and I think the best thing that you did for this client, Emily, is when you broke it down on, in the snapshot and, and showed the historical return of the portfolio, which is, you know, gives you some insight into what's going on in the future. Not only did he have a lot of expensive investments that, uh, you know, he didn't need to pay those fees, but he had those dreaded bond funds. So 
the little bit of bonds that he did have, he had a position in a way where it was heads you lose, tails you lose. Yeah, exactly, Bob. And so by, you know, going forward and actually breaking them out, it's just in the long run, it's going to be a lot more beneficial for him in this portfolio. And he can just do more with those. Yeah, and that's a big deal right now. We've talked about this a lot. If you look at the first quarter of this year and you look at where money's been going, um, a lot of investors, and you might be one of them, have been just putting their money into these, jamming money into these bond funds. And what you don't realize is as interest rates start to go up, which looks like they might do this year, is those bond prices on those bond funds start to go down and people start to panic out of them. So a lot of times you think you're going into a safe investment, but the reality of it is with those bond funds, they end up being very, very risky. And right now more than ever, especially with interest rates at such a low point with really nowhere to go but up, there's going to be a lot of regret later because they're really going to get hit hard. Well, you know, Rye, the way to hedge against that is to own the individual bonds where you know exactly when your money's going to come back, right? Not only just the return of the money, but a return of your money. And not to mention the income is typically higher on an institutionally managed bond portfolio because those bond funds, most of the income gets eaten up by the fees. So it's like you say, Bob, it's heads you lose, tails you lose, a very bad investment to have in your portfolio. Well, M, great job on this. Another what Bob would call financial masterpiece. Clearly getting this guy on his path to financial freedom. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of review I need. I need to fill in that income gap. I need to generate current income for retirement. I'm sitting with too much cash. I have bond funds. I don't have a plan. We still have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and our superstar, Emily DeValent, will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. Bring in those statements, print them off the computer or put them inside a folder if they came in the mail this month, bring them in the office. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we get a bird's eye view or a full picture of your entire financial life. And we're going to look at all the critical components like this. We're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income to up to $52,000 a year, filling the income gap so this man can enjoy retirement sooner than later. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in these portfolios. You don't see it. We're going to break down all the hidden costs in your mutual funds, annuities, insurance products, show you how to reduce costs on the portfolio so there's more money in your pocket. And we're going to look at diversification. Do you have too much money just sitting in cash? Is all your money concentrated in one area? Do you have lots of different accounts everywhere all doing the same thing? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio against the downside. And then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left. Don't miss out. All you have to do is be one of our next few callers and have saved over 200000 for retirement. Rye, Emily, and I will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now there's no obligation and no cost, but there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another great show, M. It's always a pleasure not only to have you sit two decks away from me, but to, uh, to join us this weekend and uh, do this case with us. I'm, I'm honored. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Well, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.